Article 2001, the act of a thief or robber who has entered the hotel is not deemed force majeure unless it is done with the use of arms or through an irresistible force. N. Article 2002, the hotel keeper is not liable for compensation if the loss is due to the acts of the guest, his family, servants or visitors, or if the loss arises from the character of the things brought into the hotel. N. Article 2003, the hotel keeper cannot free himself from responsibility by posting notices to the effect that he is not liable for the articles brought by the guest. Any stipulation between the hotel keeper and the guest whereby the responsibility of the former is set forth in Articles 1998-2001 to is suppressed or diminished shall be void. N. Article 2004, the hotel keeper has a right to retain the things brought into the hotel by the guest as a security for credits on account of lodging and supplies usually furnished to hotel guests. N. Chapter 4, sequestration or judicial deposit. Article 2005, a judicial deposit or sequestration takes place when an attachment or seizure of Property and litigation is ordered. 1785. Article 2006. Movable as well as immovable property may be the object of sequestration. 1786. Article 2007. The depository of property or objects sequestrated cannot be relieved of his responsibility until the controversy which gave rise thereto has come to an end, unless the court so orders, 1787a. Article 2008, the depository of property sequestrated is bound to comply with respect to the same, with all the obligations of a good father of a family, 1788. Article 2009, as to matters not provided for in this code, Judicial sequestration shall be governed by the rules of court, 1789A. Title 13. Aleatory Contracts. General Provision. Article 2010. By an aleatory contract, one of the parties or both reciprocally bind themselves to give or to do something in consideration of what the other shall give or do upon the happening of an event which is uncertain, or which is to occur at an Indeterminate Time, 1790. Chapter 1. Insurance. Article 2011. The contract of insurance is governed by special laws. Matters not expressly provided for in such special laws shall be regulated by this code. N. Article 2012. Any person who is forbidden from receiving any donation under Article 739 cannot be named beneficiary of a life insurance policy by the person who cannot make any donation to him, according to said article. N. Chapter 2. Gambling. Article 2013. A game of chance is that which depends more on chance or hazard than our skill or ability. For the purposes of the following articles, in case of doubt a game is deemed to be one of chance. N. Article 2014. No action can be maintained by the winner for the collection of what he has won in a game of chance, but any loser in a game of chance may recover his loss from the winner with legal interest from the time he paid the amount lost and subsidiarily from the operator or manager of the gambling house 1799A. Article 2015. If cheating or deceit is committed by the winner, he and subsidiarily the operator or manager of the gambling house shall pay by way of exemplary damages, not less than the equivalent of the sum lost. In addition to the latter amount, if both the winner and the loser have perpetrated fraud, no action for recovery can be brought by either. N. Article 2016. If the loser refuses or neglects to bring an action to recover what has been lost, his or her creditors, spouse, descendants or other persons entitled to be supported by the loser may institute the action. The sum thereby obtained shall be 
applied to the creditor's claims, or to the support of the spouse or relatives, as the case may be, n. Article 2017. The provisions of Article 2014 and 2016 apply when two or more persons bet in a game of chance, although they take no active part in the game itself. 1799A. Article 2018. If a contract which purports to be for the delivery of goods, securities or shares of stock is entered into with the Intention that the difference between the price stipulated and the exchange or market price at the time of the pretended delivery shall be paid by the loser to the winner, the transaction is null and void. The loser may recover what he has paid. N. Article 2019. Betting on the result of sports, athletic competitions, or games of skill may be prohibited by local ordinances. N. Article 2020. The loser in any game which is not one of chance, when there is no local ordinance which prohibits betting therein, is under obligation to pay his loss, unless the amount thereof is excessive under the circumstances. In the latter case, the court shall reduce the loss to the proper sum. 1801A. Chapter 3. Life Annuity. Article 2021. The aleatory contract of life annuity binds the debtor to pay an annual pension or income during the life of one or more determinate persons in consideration of a capital consisting of money or other property whose ownership is transferred to him at once with the burden of the income. 1802A. Article 2022. The annuity may be constituted upon the life of the person who gives the capital upon that of a third person, or upon the lives of various persons, all of whom must be living at the time the annuity is established. It may also be constituted in favor of the person or persons upon whose life or lives the contract is entered into, or in favor of another or other persons. 1803a. Article 2023. Life annuity shall be void if constituted upon the life of a person who was already dead at the time the contract was entered into, or who was at that time suffering from an illness which caused his death within 20 days following said date, 1804. Article 2024. The lack of payment of the income due does not authorize the recipient of the life annuity to demand the reimbursement of the capital or to retake possession of the property alienated. Unless there is a stipulation to the contrary, he shall have only a right judicially to claim the payment of the income in arrears and to require a security for the future income, unless there is a stipulation to the contrary. 1805A. Article 2025. The income corresponding to the year in which the person enjoying it dies shall be paid in proportion to the days during which he lived. If the income should be paid by installments in advance, the whole amount of the installment which began to run during his life shall be paid. 1806. Article 2026. He who constitutes an annuity by gratuitous title upon his property may provide at the time the annuity is established that the same shall not be subject to execution or attachment on account of the obligations of the recipient of the annuity. If the annuity was constituted in fraud of creditors, the latter may ask for the execution or attachment of the property. 1807A. Article 2027. No annuity shall be claimed without first proving the existence of the person upon whose life the annuity is constituted. 1808. Title 14. Compromises and Arbitrations. Chapter 1. Compromises. Article 2028. A compromise is a contract whereby the parties, by making reciprocal concessions, avoid a litigation or put an end to one already commenced 1809a. Article 2029. The court shall endeavor to persuade the litigants in a civil case to agree upon 
some fair compromise. N. Article 2030. Every civil action or proceeding shall be suspended. 1. If willingness to discuss a possible compromise is expressed by one or both parties, or 2. If it appears that one of the parties, before the commencement of the action or proceeding, offered to discuss a possible compromise but the other party refused the offer, the duration and terms of the suspension of the civil action or proceeding and similar matters shall be governed by such provisions of the rules of court as the Supreme Court shall promulgate. Said rules of court shall likewise provide for the appointment and duties of amicable compounders. N. Article 2031. The courts may mitigate the damages to be paid by the losing party who has shown a sincere desire for a compromise. N. Article 2032. The court's approval is necessary in compromises entered into by guardians, parents, absentees, representatives, and administrators or executors of decedents estates. 1810A. Article 2033. Juridical persons may compromise only in the form and with the requisites which may be necessary to alienate their property. 1812A. Article 2034. There may be a compromise upon the civil liability arising from an offense, but such compromise shall not extinguish the public action for the imposition of the legal penalty. 1813. Article 2035. No compromise upon the following questions shall be valid. 1. The civil status of persons. 2. The validity of a marriage or a legal separation. 3. Any ground for legal separation. 4. Future support. 5. The jurisdiction of courts. 6. Future legitimacy. 1814A. Article 2036. A compromise comprises only those objects which are definitely stated therein, or which by necessary implication from its terms should be deemed to have been included in the same. A general renunciation of rights is understood to refer only to those that are connected with the dispute which was the subject of the Compromise, 1815. Article 2037. A compromise has upon the parties the effect and authority of res judicata, but there shall be no execution except in compliance with the Judicial Compromise, 1816. Article 2038. A compromise in which there is mistake, fraud, violence, intimidation, undue influence, or falsity of documents, is subject to the provisions of Article 1330 of this Code. However, one of parties cannot set up a mistake of fact as against the other if the latter, by virtue of the compromise, has withdrawn from a litigation already commenced. 1817A. Article 2039. When the parties compromise generally on all differences which they might have with each other, the discovery of Documents referring to one or more but not to all of the questions settled shall not itself be a cause for annulment or rescission of the compromise, unless said documents have been concealed by one of the parties. But the compromise may be annulled or rescinded if it refers only to one thing to which one of the parties has no right, as shown by the newly discovered documents. N. Article 2040. If after a litigation has been decided by a final judgment, a compromise should be agreed upon, either or both parties. Being unaware of the existence of the final judgment, the compromise may be rescinded. Ignorance of a judgment, which may be revoked or set aside is not a valid ground for attacking a compromise. 1819A. Article 2041. If one of the parties fails or refuses to abide by the compromise, the other party may either enforce the compromise or regard it as rescinded and insist upon his original demand. N. Chapter 2. Arbitrations. Article 2042. The same persons who may enter into a compromise may submit their controversies 
to one or more arbitrators for decision 1A20A Article 2043 The provisions of the preceding chapter upon compromises shall also be applicable to arbitrations 1A21A Article 2044 Any stipulation that the arbitrator's award or decision shall be final is valid without prejudice to Articles 2038, 2039, and 2040, n. Article 2045, any clause giving one of the parties power to choose more arbitrators than the other is void and of no effect, n. Article 2046, the appointment of arbitrators and the procedure for arbitration shall be governed by the provisions of such rules of Court as the Supreme Court shall promulgate n. Title 15. Guarantee. Chapter 1. Nature and Extent of Guarantee. Article 2047. By guarantee a person, called the guarantor, binds himself to the creditor to fulfill the obligation of the principal debtor, in case the latter should fail to do so. If a person binds himself solidarily with the principal debtor, the provisions of Section 4, Chapter 3, Title I of this book shall be observed. In such case the contract is called a suretyship 1822A. Article 2048, a guarantee is gratuitous, unless there is a stipulation to the contrary, n. Article 2049. A married woman may guarantee an obligation without the husband's consent, but shall not thereby bind the conjugal partnership, except in cases provided by law. N. Article 2050. If a guarantee is entered into without the knowledge or consent, or against the will of the principal debtor, the provisions of Articles 1236 and 1237 shall apply. N. Article 2051, a guarantee may be conventional, legal or judicial, gratuitous, or by onerous title. It may also be constituted, not only in favor of the principal debtor, but also in favor of the other guarantor, with the latter's consent, or without his knowledge, or even over his objection. 1823. Article 2052, a guarantee cannot exist without a valid obligation. Nevertheless, a guarantee may be constituted to guarantee the performance of a voidable or an unenforceable contract. It may also guarantee a natural obligation. 1824A. Article 2053. A guarantee may also be given as security for future debts, the amount of which is not yet known. There can be no claim against the guarantor until the debt is liquidated. A conditional obligation may also be secured. 1825A. Article 2054. A guarantor may bind himself for less, but not for more than the principal debtor, both as regards the amount and the onerous nature of the conditions. Should he have bound himself for more, his obligations shall be reduced to the limits of that of the debtor. 1826. Article 2055. A guarantee is not presumed. It must be expressed and cannot extend to more than what is stipulated therein. If it be simple or indefinite, it shall compromise not only the principal obligation, but also all its accessories, including the judicial costs, provided with respect to the latter, that the guarantor shall only be liable for those costs incurred after he has been judicially Required to pay. 1827A. Article 2056. One who is obliged to furnish a guarantor shall present a person who possesses integrity, capacity to bind himself, and sufficient property to answer for the obligation which he guarantees. The guarantor shall be subject to the jurisdiction of the court of the place where this obligation is to be complied with. 1828A. Article 2057. If the guarantor should be convicted in first instance of a crime involving dishonesty or should become insolvent, the creditor may demand another who has all the qualifications required in the preceding article. The case is accepted where the 
creditor has required and stipulated that a specified person should be the guarantor. 1829A. Chapter 2. Effects of Guarantee. Section 1. Effects of Guarantee between the Guarantor and the Creditor. Article 2058. The guarantor cannot be compelled to pay the creditor unless the latter has exhausted all the property of the debtor and has resorted to all the legal remedies against the debtor, 1A30A. Article 2059. The excussion shall not take place. 1. If the guarantor has expressly renounced it. 2. If he has bound himself solidarily with the debtor. 3. In case of insolvency of the debtor. 4. When he has absconded, or cannot be sued within the Philippines unless he has left a manager or representative. 5. If it may be presumed that an execution on the property of the principal debtor would not result in the satisfaction of the obligation, 1831A. Article 2060. In order that the guarantor may make use of the benefit of exclusion, he must set it up against the creditor upon the latter's demand for payment from him, and point out to the creditor available property of the debtor within Philippine territory, sufficient to cover the amount of the debt. 1832. Article 2061. The guarantor having fulfilled all the conditions required in the preceding, Article, the creditor who is negligent in exhausting the property pointed out shall suffer the loss to the extent of said property for the insolvency of the debtor resulting from such negligence, 1833A. Article 2062. In every action by the creditor, which must be against the principal debtor alone, except in the cases mentioned in Article 2059, the former shall ask the court to notify the guarantor of the action. The guarantor may appear so that he may, if he so desire, set up such defenses as are granted him by law. The benefit of excussion mentioned in Article 2058 shall always be unimpaired, even if judgment should be rendered against the principal debtor and the guarantor. In case of appearance by the latter, 1A34A. A. Article 2063. A compromise between the creditor and the principal debtor benefits the guarantor, but does not prejudice him. That which is entered into between the guarantor and the creditor benefits but does not prejudice the principal debtor. 1A35A. A. Article 2064. The guarantor of a guarantor shall enjoy the benefit of excussion both with respect to the guarantor and to the principal debtor, 1836. Article 2065, should there be several guarantors of only one debtor and for the same debt, the obligation to answer for the same is divided among all. The creditor cannot claim from the guarantors except the shares which they are respectively bound to pay, unless solidarity has been expressly stipulated. The benefit of division against the co-guarantors ceases in the same cases and for the same reasons as the benefit of excussion against the principal debtor, 1837. Section 2. Effects of Guarantee Between the Debtor and the Guarantor Article 2066. The guarantor who pays for a debtor must be indemnified by the latter. The indemnity comprises 1. The total amount of the debt. 2. The legal interests thereon from the time the payment was made known to the debtor, even though it did not earn interest for the creditor. 3. The expenses incurred by the guarantor after having notified the debtor that payment had been demanded of him. 4. Damages, if they are due, 1838A. Article 2067. The guarantor who pays is subrogated by virtue thereof to all the rights which the creditor had against the debtor. If the guarantor has compromised with the creditor, he cannot demand of the debtor more than what he has really paid. 1839. Article 2068. If the guarantor should pay without notifying the debtor, the latter may enforce against him all the defenses which he 
could have set up against the creditor at the time the payment was made, 1840. Article 2069. If the debt was for a period and the guarantor paid it before it became due, he cannot demand reimbursement of the debtor until the expiration of the period unless the payment has been ratified by the debtor. 1841A. Article 2070. If the guarantor has paid without notifying the debtor, and the latter not being aware of the payment, repeats the payment, the former has no remedy whatever against the debtor, but only against the creditor. Nevertheless, in case of a gratuitous guarantee, if the guarantor was prevented by a fortuitous event from advising the debtor of the payment, and the creditor becomes insolvent, the debtor shall reimburse the guarantor for the amount paid, 1842a. Article 2071. The guarantor, even before having paid, may proceed against the principal debtor. 1. When he is sued for the payment. 2. In case of insolvency of the principal debtor. 3. When the debtor has bound himself to relieve him from the guarantee within a specified period, and this period has expired. 4. When the debt has become demandable, by reason of the expiration of the period for payment. 5. After the lapse of 10 years. When the principal obligation has no fixed period for its maturity, unless it be of such nature that it cannot be extinguished except within a period longer than 10 years. 6. If there are reasonable grounds to fear that the principal debtor intends to abscond, 7. If the principal debtor is in imminent danger of becoming insolvent. In all these cases, the action of the guarantor is to obtain release from the guarantee, or to demand a security that shall protect him from any proceedings by the creditor and from the danger of insolvency of the debtor. 1A34A Article 2072 If one, at the request of another, becomes a guarantor for the debt of a third person who is not present, the guarantor who satisfies the debt may sue either the person so requesting or the debtor for reimbursement. N. Section 3. Effects of guarantee is between co-guarantors. Article 2073. When there are two or more guarantors of the same debtor and for the same debt, the one among them who has paid may demand of each of the others the share which is proportionally owing from him. If any of the guarantors should be insolvent, his share shall be borne by the others, including the pair, in the same proportion. The provisions of this article shall not be applicable, unless the payment has been made by virtue of a judicial demand or unless the principal debtor is insolvent. 1844A Article 2074. In the case of the preceding article, the co-guarantors may set up against the one who paid the same defenses, which would have pertained to the principal debtor against the creditor, and which are not purely personal to the debtor. 1845. Article 2075. A sub-guarantor, in case of the insolvency of the guarantor for whom he bound, himself, is responsible to the co-guarantors, in the same terms as the guarantor, 1846. Chapter 3. Extinguishment of Guarantee. Article 2076. The obligation of the guarantor is extinguished at the same time as that of the debtor, and for the same causes as all other obligations, 1847. Article 2077. If the creditor voluntarily accepts a movable or other property in payment of the debt, even if he should afterwards lose the same through eviction, the guarantor is released. 1849. Article 2078. A release made by the creditor in favor of one of the guarantors without the consent of the others benefits all to the Extent of the share of the guarantor to whom it has been granted, 1850. Article 2079. An extension granted to the debtor by the creditor without the consent of the guarantor extinguishes the guarantee. The mere failure on the part of the creditor to demand payment after the debt has become due 
does not of itself constitute any extension of time referred to herein, 1851a. Article 2080. The guarantors, even though they be solidary, are released from their obligation whenever by some act of the creditor. They cannot be subrogated to the rights, mortgages, and preference of the latter, 1852. Article 2081. The guarantor may set up against the creditor all the defenses which pertain to the principal debtor and are inherent in the debt, but not those that are personal to the debtor, 1853. Chapter 4. Legal and Judicial Bonds. Article 2082. The bondsman who is to be offered in virtue of a provision of law or of a judicial order shall have the qualifications prescribed in Article 2056 and in Special Laws 1854A. Article 2083. If the person bound to give a bond in the cases of the preceding article should not be able to do so, a pledge or mortgage considered sufficient to cover his obligation shall be admitted in lieu thereof. 1855. Article 2084. A judicial bondsman cannot demand the exhaustion of the property of the principal debtor. A subsurety in the same case cannot demand the exhaustion of the property of the debtor or of the surety. Title 16. Pledge, Mortgage and ANTICHRESIS. Chapter 1. Provisions Common to Pledge and Mortgage. Article 2085. The following requisites are essential to the contracts of pledge and mortgage. 1. That they be constituted to secure the fulfillment of a principal obligation. 2. That the pledge or her mortgager be the absolute owner of the thing pledged or mortgaged. 3. That the persons constituting the pledge or mortgage have the free disposal of their property and in the absence thereof, that they be legally authorized for the purpose. Third, persons who are not parties to the principal obligation may secure the latter by pledging or mortgaging their own property. 1857. Article 2086. The provisions of Article 2052 are applicable to a pledge or mortgage. N. Article 2087. It is also of the essence of these contracts that, when the principal obligation becomes due, the things in which the pledge or mortgage consists may be alienated for the payment to the creditor. 1858. Article 2088. The creditor cannot appropriate the things given by way of pledge or mortgage or dispose of them. Any stipulation to the contrary is null and void. 1859A. Article 2089. A pledge or mortgage is indivisible, even though the debt may be divided among the successors in interest of the debtor or of the creditor. Therefore, the debtor's heir who has paid a part of the debt cannot ask for the proportionate extinguishment of the pledge or mortgage as long as the debt is not completely satisfied. Neither can the creditor's heir who received his share of the debt return the pledge or cancel the mortgage to the prejudice of the other heirs who have not been paid. From these provisions is accepted the case in which there being several things given in mortgage or pledge, each one of them guarantees only a determinate portion of the credit. The debtor, in this case, shall have a right to the extinguishment of the pledge or mortgage as the portion of the debt for which each thing is specially answerable is satisfied. 1860. Article 2090. The indivisibility of a pledge or mortgage is not affected by the fact that the debtors are not solidarily liable. N. Article 2091. The contract of pledge or mortgage may secure all kinds of obligations, be they pure or subject to a suspensive or Resolutory Condition, 1861. Article 2092. A promise to constitute a pledge or mortgage gives rise only to a personal action between the contracting parties, without prejudice to the criminal responsibility incurred by him who defrauds another by offering in pledge or mortgage as unencumbered things which he knew were subject to some burden. 
or by misrepresenting himself to be the owner of the same. 1862. Chapter 2. Pledge. Article 2093. In addition to the requisites prescribed in Article 2085, it is necessary, in order to constitute the contract of pledge, that the thing pledged be placed in the possession of the creditor or of a third person by common agreement, 1863. Article 2094. All movables which are within commerce may be pledged, provided they are susceptible of possession, 1864. Article 2095. Incorporeal rights, evidenced by negotiable instruments, bills of lading, shares of stock, bonds, warehouse receipts, and similar documents may also be pledged. The instrument proving the right pledged shall be delivered to the creditor, and if negotiable, must be endorsed. N. Article 2096. A pledge shall not take effect against third persons if the description of the thing pledged in the date of the pledge do not appear in a public instrument. 1865A. Article 2097. With the consent of the pledgee. The thing pledged may be alienated by the pledger or owner, subject to the pledge. The ownership of the thing pledged is transmitted to the vendee or transferee as soon as the pledge consents to the alienation. But the latter shall continue in possession. N. Article 2098. The contract of pledge gives a right to the creditor to retain the thing in his possession or in that of a third person to whom it has been delivered, until the debt is paid, 1866A. Article 2099. The creditor shall take care of the thing pledged with the diligence of a good father of a family. He has a right to the reimbursement of the expenses made for its preservation, and is liable for its loss or deterioration, in conformity with the provisions of this Code, 1867. Article 2100. The pledgee cannot deposit the thing pledged with a third person unless there is a stipulation authorizing him to do so. The pledgee is responsible for the acts of his agents or employees with respect to the thing pledged.